Hi everyone, my name is Raylan Stokes and I'm a management analyst and communication team lead at the USGS Astrogeology Science Center in Flagstaff, Arizona. Today I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Ken Herkenhoff. Hi Raylan, I'm Ken. So Ken is a planetary scientist at the Astrogeology Science Center in Flagstaff, Arizona. He has been involved with every NASA rover mission ever sent to Mars, beginning with Mars Pathfinder in 1997. He was the science lead for the microscopic imagers on the Mars exploration rovers Spirit and Opportunity. He's on the ChemCam, MassCam, Molly, and Marty instrument teams for the Curiosity rover currently exploring Gale Crater. And he's the MassCam Z instrument team for Perseverance currently headed to Jezero Crater. So today we're meeting to kind of go over a couple of questions um, about Perseverance and your involvement with the rover missions throughout the years. So Ken, thank you so much for joining us. All right, my pleasure. So our first question, since you have been involved with NASA rovers, NASA rover missions sent to Mars over the years, what sets the Mars 2020 mission apart? And what are you most excited about? Well, the, the most exciting part about the Perseverance Mars 2020 mission is that it's the hopefully the first step in sample return. And returning samples from Mars has long been a goal of the planetary science community because once we get those samples back, um, the entire um, uh, terrestrial uh, uh, science community can analyze those samples uh, with the latest state-of-the-art equipment in their labs um, and and really the, the hope is that we're, we're going to learn a ton about Mars from from those samples. So it's really exciting to be able to uh, join the team that is going to be involved in selecting those samples and eventually hopefully bringing them home. Awesome. Yeah that is really exciting. So we know that the USGS mapping group here at ASTRO has helped to produce the map on board the Mars 2020 spacecraft, and that will help Perseverance to land safely at Jezero Crater. Can you explain to us how that works um, and how targeted landing has improved over the course of these missions? Yeah, it's and, and that map is it's more than just a simple map. It's a digital terrain model, which gives the rover knowledge of the topography of the landing site so that that terrain model, those, the topography has been loaded onto the spacecraft and will be used during entry, descent and landing to guide the, uh, the vehicle to a safe landing spot. That's never been attempted to before. It's called terrain relative navigation uh, and it allowed uh, the spacecraft to be targeted toward uh, a more risky, a less flat and safe landing site uh, than, than the previous rovers uh, had to land in. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that'll get us to a very interesting place as soon as we as soon as we land. Great. Yeah, I definitely want to keep the rover safe. You bet. So, <laughs> so MassCam Z is the next generation of the MassCam instrument that's currently on the Curiosity rover exploring Gale Crater. What is different about MassCam Z, and what's its purpose? The, the Z in MassCam Z stands for zoom, and that's what's new about these cameras. Uh, both they're stereo cameras, multispectral. Uh, they, have, they have many filters to get um, uh, different kinds of color data, and they have a zoom capability. So both of these cameras can, can zoom like a, um, a commercial uh, zoom camera, zoom lens. Uh, and take pictures at you know a, a wide variety of resolution and fields of view, so that we can really optimize the the imaging acquisition once we get on the on the surface. Cool. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. Sure. So, as you learn more and more about Mars over the years, what discoveries from these robotic missions have most surprised or intrigued you? What? Um, all of these missions have found, uh, ev well, maybe not going back to Mars Pathfinder, but uh, all of the rover missions since have found evidence for liquid water uh, in the past on Mars. And uh, in fact, some of the evidence points towards what look like habitable environments. In, in fact, uh, Spirit found evidence for ancient hot springs in, in uh, uh, Gusev Crater. Uh, the, you know, uh, hot springs on Earth are places where life thrives. So if there were hot springs on Mars, 
uh, it's quite possible that life on Mars could have survived in those environments, and, and that's really exciting. That is very exciting. Thank you for sharing that. So when Perseverance lands, you're going to be supporting two rovers on Mars. That seems like a good problem to have, but how are you going to manage that? It, it is a good problem to have indeed. And, and we've been through this before, I'm, I'm happy to say. Uh, both the Spirit and Opportunity rovers were successful and uh, were overlapping at the same time. It reminds me back in 2004, uh, after Opportunity landed, I tried to cover uh, both rovers at the same time and quickly realized that that was impossible. They were 12 hours apart and I just wasn't getting any sleep. So yeah, it's a problem to try to do both at the same time. Um, uh, what I have found is that if you, you take a day off in between, uh, you can go back and forth between these rovers without too much problem. Um, that early in the mission, um, it, all of these missions, the, the rovers, were, well, we were supporting rover operations on what we call Mars time. So we were uh, waking up or going to sleep whenever we needed to, uh, to, to be in sync with the rovers. Uh, the Mars day is about 40 minutes longer than an Earth day. So you'd be getting up 40 minutes later every day. And, and that can be pretty tough when you're getting up at 3 a.m. or getting up at 3 p.m. Uh, to do your work. Uh, but I love that part of the missions. I think it was really exciting to be um, so in tune with the rovers and and following their every move. And uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it again, even even with the lack of sleep. <laughs> gotcha. So we'll uh, we'll see you running on Mars time around the office. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> well, hopefully we'll be in the office by then. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ken. I really enjoyed talking with you and. Uh, appreciate you sharing your insight and your experience on the rover missions with us. Uh, we're all very excited for a Perseverance landing coming up really soon. Me too. Thanks, Raylan. Yes, this, this should be very exciting.